Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about the distributed file systems. This is one of the main concepts required for big data. And before we start talking about the distributed file system, let's uh, take a moment to talk about the history of file systems. When computers started, programmers and end users used to write programs on something called punch cards. Punch cards are like files or small pieces of papers that have some holes which represent binary information, zeros and ones. After that, we can group each program in a file because all punch cards related to one program should be accessed in a specific sequence. And then each file stored in order in a cabin, cabin, physical cabin. This is exactly what happens nowadays, but in a different ways, because now we have magnetical storage. And we used to represent each file with a file name and extension. And in the graphical user interface, operating system we use to present the file with an icon as well and we used to store each group of related files in a folder so for example in this screen here we have the main tree folder and then have two related files here which I think there is a relation between them so I store them under one folder folders can contain files and con can contain subfolders as well. So it's exactly the same what we applied before. And because the technology evolved, we used to do this the same on the file system instead of doing it manually on papers and punch cards. Please note that all information here is stored on one single machine or one single PC. And the file system can manage only one PC or only one operating system at a time. But what if we have information distributed across many different PCs or many different machines? Then the file management system will not be able to handle such a situation because the information is not on a single machine anymore. And the, the metadata stored for file information like where is the file? exist on the heart which we called file pointer and what is the information of this file and how can I open this file is no longer valid because it's not exist on the same operating system anymore but before we start talking about the distributed file system let's have a look on this slide here there is two different type of achieving high compute power the first concept is to use commodity cluster. Commodity cluster, to make it simple, is like multiple PCs or multiple computers or multiple physical machines. Each machine has its own compute power, RAM, and physical storage. While on the other hand, in supercomputer, it's a very huge computer that needs large space to deploy and it should and it have a massive computing power, massive RAM and massive storage. Of course, the supercomputer will give a massive computing power, but it requires a huge space to deploy the that kind of computers and it's very expensive because you need to align all these physical and hardware together while using commodity cluster is a cheaper solution because each cluster or each node or each machine is a standalone machine by itself so it has its own compute power and all, all its uh, hardware and just we you need something like a high level operating system that can manage the information on top of this commodity cluster and this is what we will talk about in the next slide 
here we will start describing the main concepts and main features of distributed file system. The main concept that we need to highlight here is the distribution concept. As you can see, I have a file. As you can see, I have a file here. And the file contains four data blocks. The distribution, co the, uh, con distribution concept talk about that this file can be distributed in multiple racks and on multiple nodes. Each graph here represents a rack. I have this uh, legend here. This, this is a rack and each rack contains multiple nodes. Each node represents a standalone machine which is on com computing power and RAM and physical storage. The distribution concepts mean that each data block can deploy it on a different cluster, different rack, and on a different node at the same time. So it's dif different from the file system, the uh, file management system, because the file management system deal with the file within the same machine or within the same cluster, while the distributed file system deal with file data blocks distributed across multiple nodes across multiple racks. The second concept that we need to talk about here is replication. Replication means that each data block will be replicated many times on different clusters and different racks. On this example, I can see that data block number one is distributed here and replicated on rack two on this node cluster and replicated also on rack 3 and on rack 4. Same happen for data block number 2, data block number 3 and data block number 4. And why I need to do something like this? And this is what we will talk about in the next slide. I need to do something like this to achieve two main advantages. The first one is fault tolerance. And how I will achieve fault tolerance? Imagine that one of the nodes, like this one, is down. So still I can assemble and access this data block from the other racks and other nodes that I have distributed this information to. And assuming that I have a full rack failure, which means that all the information on uh, clusters related to this rack is lost, Still, I can access the same information from the other racks than that I have. For example, here I lost this information for data block number two, but still I have it here in rack number two, in rack number three, and rack number four, and so on. And the worst case here in this scenario is that I have a full rack down and I have a cluster or node down or failed but I still can access the information related to data block number four from rack three and rack two. This is what we call fault tolerance. The second advantage is high concurrency concept, which is mean, what if there is many users interested to access the same data block at the same time? Let's assume that I need to access this one, data block number four, and we have four users need to access the same data block and do some processing on it at the same time. So because it is distributed and replicated across multiple racks, I can achieve this. Distributed mean it's it's in uh, the data file is split across multiple nodes, and replicated means that same data block stored again in different racks and in different clusters. And because I have multiple copies of this data block, each user can access his own copy and start accessing it will help me to achieve a high concurrency. Also, it will uh, maintain the same performance because for each cluster or for each node, it has its own computing power. So no one will need to wait for the data block to be released from the other users to start working or accessing this this data block. Uh, uh, I hope that you liked this video. And if you like this video, please don't forget to press like on, on this video. 
and uh, subscribe to our channels and uh, see you again bye